Hi, it's Jeff Cable, and you're probably looking at this table thinking, what a mess. I've got a pan of water, a seat cushion, a camera, and some flashes. What the heck is he doing? Well, I want to share with you a tip on one of my favorite things to do when I'm at home. And I haven't done this in years, but because we're quarantined because of COVID-19, I thought I need to do something fun. And that is shooting water drops. So I want to show you how easy it is to set up. And I know sometimes on the internet, they say, oh, it's really difficult to do. It's not that hard and the results are really cool. So let's take a look on how we do this so you can do this at home too. Okay, so let me explain what I've got here. I've got a Ziploc full of water right here and what I did is I took a toothpick and I poked a hole right at the bottom of the bag, made a really small hole so I get the dripping water there and uh, I just suspended that above a frying pan full of water. That's all it is. Now you'll notice in my background I've got a seat cushion because it's got a cool pattern on it, just something different here. I've got two flashes set up, but really only need one, but in this case I'm going to use two. And I'm firing the flash at the background, not at the water drop. I've got the remote on my camera. Currently I'm using a Canon 5D Mark IV with a 100mm macro lens. And so what I want to do is get that focus point right on the water drop. Now, it's hard to focus on a water drop because as it goes, it disappears so quickly. So I take an object, in this case, I'll take a key. And what I'll do is I'll put the key right where the water drop is coming. So right about here, let's double check that. Yep, water fell right on the key. I'll then focus on that key with the camera. Then I can pull it away and I know that my focal point will be right where I need it to be on the drop. Then I just trigger this. By the way, I'm shooting manual ISO 800. I am at F16. And uh, the shutter speed doesn't really matter. You could be at like a sixth of a second because the duration of the shot is not going to be by the shutter speed, but created by the flash. So it'll freeze that water drop because of the flash duration as opposed to the camera. So let's go ahead and fire. So I'm going to wait for the drop here and boom. Cool. And the cool thing is you can shoot and you want to do different shots here because what I got on this last shot was the water droplet coming back up off the drop of in the water. Sometimes you'll get it going down, sometimes you'll come, have it coming back up, and sometimes even the pre-drop before it pops back up and you kind of get the splash is really cool. And um, you'll notice I've got a seat cushion right now, but I've also got other things here. Let me switch out the seat cushion. Um, and I've got uh, a picture that I took at the Olympics in London, and it has a cool logo, um, the London uh, uh, Olympic logo. And so now what's going to happen is, is I'm firing, we're going to get a different look reflecting in the background. Totally different than what we had before. So I'll just run around the house and I'll look for interesting, ooh, that was a cool shot. Um, I'll look for cool backgrounds and just throw them in there. So again, it's really simple. The flashes are at ETTL, camera and manual mode with a trigger. You're pointing your flash at the background and letting the water droplets go. You can also raise and lower the bag to see how the drops change from a higher distance, or you could poke a smaller or bigger hole to get more drops. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm gonna try that next. So I wanna show you some of the results and you can see how cool it is. Simple project to do at home. It really took about maybe 10 or 15 minutes to set up and it yielded some really cool results. Let's take a look. Now you can see here that I've got this one here where you can see the droplet and it's actually before it hit the water. I love that look. It's kind of cool with the splash going out from it. And if you see this image here, you can see the reflection of the background coming into the droplet. It is reverse of the background. So sometimes I'll take the background and put it upside down. This one here I really love because you can tell the different background that I put behind the image and how it's reflecting. Now I'm getting a look of a sunset that I took in San Francisco and I just put that sunset picture in the background and that's the yellows and oranges that you're seeing here. This is a San Jose Sharks fabric that my family had and uh, I put that in the background just so I could see how that looked. So just experiment with different things laying around the house and have some fun at home.